Welcome everyone to our chapel chat. This is for Tuesday, April 14th. So Father, if you could read the gospel. All right, the gospel is from John chapter 20. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you, have, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the first thing that came to mind with this gospel is sort of a really big topic. I don't know if maybe it'll take up this entire chapel chat, but what it's reminding me of is the need for both the, the magisterium and the laity in the church in terms of bringing God's message, the revelation of God and, and God's will for the church to full fruit. Because the way I see this is Mary Magdalene in this gospel is representing the lay faithful. She's not one of the apostles. She's not ordained. And yet she is the one who receives this message from the risen Lord. She is the one and she's just, and she's a sinner. She's the one who, who brings this to the disciples, the apostles, and then they hear of the message of the, of the, the resurrection. And then, you know, it goes from there. But the way I'm seeing this is there's this beautiful relationship between the magisterium and the rest of the church. It's not like just the Pope and the bishops are off on the side doing their own thing and they just figure everything out and we, the lay faithful, just kind of follow along in subservience. No, there's this, there's this need for both. And sometimes it actually is the lay faithful who will bring something to the magisterium mm -hmm. that the mm -hmm. magisterium needs to hear. And the danger, of course, is when you try to, you fall in one of, uh, one of two extremes. You can either focus exclusively on the magisterium and silence and and completely put out the 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 words of the faith the lay faithful or you can completely abandon the magisterium and say you know we'll just do this on our we don't need any of that. like you need both of them and it, it's striking to me that in this gospel it shows both of them we don't Jesus doesn't reject all of the apostles he still upholds them and he still has them carry about his work in the church but at the same time Mary is the one, Mary Magdalene is the one that brings this message to them. That's great. Well, that's, a, that's a great conversation. Um, I want to go into a, in a different direction for what struck me, and then we might come back to that. So one of the things that has always struck me about this gospel is that Mary is weeping, looking for Jesus. She's longing to find his body. She's weeping. And then the angels come to her, and Jesus himself says, Why are you weeping? kind of eliciting from her heart her desire for Jesus. And Jesus says, whom are you looking for? And after she responds from the depths of her pain, longing for Jesus, what happens? Jesus speaks her name, Mary. Jesus comes to us in our pain and he speaks our name. And when he speaks our name in the midst of our pain, he reveals himself. We begin to recognize that he was there, that he is there, that he is who he says he is, that he is alive, right? And, and this is a, a kind of a, a theme in my own life. The more I discover Jesus in the midst of my pain, the more I hear him speak my name, the more I realize that he's alive and that I don't have to be weeping anymore. A lot of places of pain in my life where I'm weeping and Jesus is saying to me, why are you weeping? I'm here. I have you. I love you. And it's not until I articulate what I'm really longing for that I often hear him speak to me. So one of the, just one of the great truths here is that oftentimes we don't recognize the life of Jesus present in our midst until we allow him 
to, to come into that place of pain. And that's when we hear his voice. And that's when we're never the same. So that's what really struck me is that like this life of Mary Magdalene in many ways is playing itself out in our day to day. Uh, and, uh, um, and my encouragement to people is allow people to experience that longing, that ache in their hearts in the midst of their pain, because that's precisely where Jesus wants to meet people. And there's always that fascinating line that there's so much commentary that's been written on this where he says, stop holding on to me for I have not mm-hmm. yet ascended to the Father. Obviously, we can get attached to understanding Jesus the way we want him mm-hmm. to be. And, and Mary and the disciples, they were accustomed to Jesus being there, walking with them, being another, another you know, guy like anyone else. But that was not the completion of his mission. Jesus ultimately was called to be with the Father in heaven so that he could send the Holy Spirit upon That's all right. of the earth. That's right. And so even as awesome as it would have been to walk with Jesus as the disciples did, the fullness of what God was truly about didn't take place until Jesus ascended. And that's kind of what he's hinting at. I have not yet ascended to the Father. I'm going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Because it's through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that that sonship, that right. that being a child of God mm-hmm. is truly possible for all of us. And that's precisely what the Gospels over and over and over show us, is that the fulfillment of all the work of Christ is when he pours out his Spirit on the church that we might become other Christs. We might know him, not just as someone who's outside of us, but know him inside of us. That Jesus Christ is alive and he lives within us. And when that comes alive to someone, um, you can't really stop them from sharing the good news that Jesus Christ is alive. He's not dead. And uh, that's exactly what he's talking about here. Don't hold on to me. There's something even greater coming upon you. And it took Mary a a little bit to figure out what happened. It's, it's funny that at first she still didn't get it. She sees that his body is gone and so she's weeping and she sees angels, but maybe she didn't really realize there were angels or whatever because her response was just so like, she just talks to them as if they're just people, but says, they have taken my Lord and I don't know where they laid him. So she still doesn't think he's risen. She mm-hmm. thinks he's just been stolen. His body has been stolen and maybe, you know, desecrated or whatever. And then even Jesus, when, when he comes, she's, she doesn't recognize him. It's sort of a mysterious thing. We don't know why. Was he disguising himself? Was it just a spiritual, like, a spiritual thing? But whatever it was, she, she didn't recognize him and says the same thing. Tell me where you have laid him and I will take him. Like she still doesn't understand yeah. what has happened. Like, like there's this slow transformation. And the same is the case for so, so many of us. It, I think often we're hoping for like a quick fix. I just want to be... I just want to be a saint today. I just want to be mm-hmm. done with this. But most of the time, it's a, it's a process. Mm-hmm. It's, it's gradual. It takes time. And, and so it was even with Mary in this little gospel. That's right. And, and coming back to your prior, prior point about the lay faithful and the clergy, um, one of the things that impresses me the most, or it's impressed upon my heart the most, is that people are having real encounters with the risen Jesus in their prayer and in their private lives. And sometimes they tell priests. They don't tell Mm -hmm. other people because they don't want to be seen as crazy or they don't want people to judge them or be ridiculed. They tell us, I have seen the Lord. They say very similar things. I've seen the Lord. And I can tell you as a priest, I'm very much built up by that. I mean, Jesus is alive and he's communicating himself to so many people. Uh, But for whatever reason, um, we don't talk about that very much. But as priests, we get to hear that. And I'm always built up by the the revelation of God to the hearts of his faithful. And it is a similar way of, of the Mary Magdalene's, if you may, coming to the, the, the disciples who are in the clergy, if you may, um, and building us up. I have seen the Lord. Yeah. This is what he's telling me. I'm going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And I just got an email the other day of someone saying, hey, I was in prayer and Jesus told me to tell you this. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying that every parishioner should be doing that. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but there's a sense in which, like, I love when people encounter Jesus. And I love what he says. I love what he does. And it's just, I feel very, very much like a disciple here. Uh, one, of the, one of the brothers, if you may, and Mary Magdalene is always coming to me and saying, hey, I didn't recognize him and then I did. And this is what he said. And there's just a joy in that. Yeah. And imagine if 
all of our parishes were places where people were completely free to talk about these things That's right. and didn't have to feel like, well, maybe I'm a weirdo because I actually think Jesus is talking to me or I had this experience. Like, no, yeah. that, that is normal. That is what is meant to happen in the Christian life. I was just praying this morning about um, that understanding of that our parish and every parish needs to be a parish that is able to look, know how to pray, to hear God's voice, to be able to share with each other the things that he's saying, the things that he's doing, to build each other up. Because I think one of the reasons why we are afraid, um, one of the reasons why we don't run, as we were talking about yesterday, running to announce the, the, the gospel, announce that Jesus is alive, is because we have all these different um, in a, insecurities about hearing from God. Yeah. Right? But when we know that he's spoken, and we know that he's speaking to each other, we can live in the joy of the resurrection and, and just live in peace knowing that he's conquered everything. Well, let's pray for that grace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we know you speak to us. You promise that my sheep hear my voice. Lord, we are your sheep. We are your disciples. Help us to hear you. Help us to have confidence in your words to speak to us. Give us courage to be willing to share what's going on in our hearts and our prayer with others to build them up. Give us courage to be like Mary Magdalene to say, I've seen the Lord. Here he is. Here is what he has done in my life. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for the gift of the resurrection and the glory that is now shining on all of us as your beloved sons and daughters. We pray all of this in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.